In this demo, I'm going to show you the new 2.4 feature called custom conditions. So custom conditions are a way to manipulate raw input data when you just get into these kind of weird situations where it's not quite modeling, but you need, you need to do some transformation of the data. So as an example, you're querying an old SOAP interface and it returns escaped XML, or you want to query a SQL table and figure out if records are missing, or you want counters or, or those kind of capabilities. So our answer to that in 2.4 are custom conditions. Now to show those off, what I'm going to do is I've created a SQL input. And if we go look at this, it's just pulling records from a maintenance table. And these records are unique by asset number. And it's really simple. You know, if you look in here now, I've got three records in here, two unique assets. So let's say I want to query SQL, but what I actually need for like a REST query or, or, or a different um, interface is I want to pull the asset IDs out. And then I want to go hit a REST server with those asset, asset IDs to get like a current status as an example. Right, so you can't quite do that in modeling. It's kind of confusing to do that, but we can do it on the raw input data. Now in SQL, I could probably go write the query to return just the array of assets versus, versus everything, but in a lot of other inputs, you can't, right? So you don't have that kind of flexibility. So this applies across the board to any input. So I've got that working. So what I'm going to do now, oh, I'm going to all start from scratch. So I'll go create a custom condition, and I'm going to call it uh, SQL to unique unique IDs. And you can see it's it's an addition. We have aggregates, dead man, and now custom. The idea is custom can let you do almost anything, right? Meet all the edge cases. As we see patterns emerge, we'll create other conditions that just kind of work out of the box and provide UI to make it easier so you don't have to write JavaScript. So in this case, I'm going to pull in you know one or more sources. How can custom conditions work is for each source, anytime you read it, it gets run through this expression. So I'm just going to have the re expression return zero. What's really cool in 2.4 is we added the ability to read conditions. So I can just test read you know, this source and it's gonna to run to the expression and I get zero as expected. But let's go manipulate this because what we wanna do is take, you know, if we just change this to current value, which means it's just gonna return the current value. So this binds to the current value of the red parameter. Uh, and if we just did a test read on this, we'd expect the raw SQL input to come back. So what we really just want is, is an array of these IDs. Right, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go write some JavaScript to pull that out. And I'm going to cheat. <coughs> and we bind a few things in here. We bind the current value. We have an attribute where we bind the last value. So the previous read that occurred, what was that value? And then the last value we return. So you have access to all three of those. So you can do things that are stateful in here too, right? Like you, you get some state management between reads to do things like dead band or, again, look to see if, if rows are missing, etc. So in here, I'm going to write some simple JavaScript. You can Google, you know, how to do a for loop in JavaScript. Stack Overflow is, uh, is what we all use as software engineers. So you can see this is kind of the syntax. I've just copied that over. So I'm going to take, I'm going to return an array. And my current value, I'm going to index over each one. And I'm just going to pull out the asset column, which again is that one. Stuff it in the array. And then I'm going to return the array when I'm done. So now if I do a test read on this. <coughs> you'll see I get an array of just the IDs, so it looks closer. But in, you know, in my case, I don't want duplicates. So uh, in software, what we're going to do is create a set. And this is just JavaScript, so you can look, at, look this up too. And for sets, it's, it's called add. And what this will do is if I push two, you know, if I add in two unique, I, two duplicate IDs, I'll just get one out. So if I do this, I'm going to get the same. Oop. Oh, it's returning an empty object. So I think what I need to do is... Since this is a set now, I need to convert it to an array when I'm done. And again, this is all just standard JavaScript. And there you go. So now I've taken my raw SQL query and I've created this. And now this is an input in the system, right? So if I go anywhere else, I can just do it here. Uh, I have the ability to go reference this thing. And anytime I do a read on that, this is the result I'm going to get. So I could use this to go drive a REST query or whatever um, to optimize comms. Uh, so I'll show you one more thing. Well, the other thing we added is global functions. So let's say it's kind of trivial on this example, but let's say this this code gets duplicated everywhere. So what I really want to do is call get set, and I want to pass it current value. And this actually I want to make a global function, which means I want to be able to reuse it in expressions, instances, you name it. So if I do this and I call read, it's going to fail because that's get set is not known. But if we go into the functions part of the product, now I can create a function called get set. 
and I'm going to bring in my array, and then I'm going to define the function. So it's the same code. The only difference is instead of, I just have to change the variable name. And then depending on uh, how type A I am, go change all the syntax, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not really going to do that. And then the last thing, because this is a function in JavaScript, I do need to return. Right, but now that I have this, Oops. Uh, I'll save that. We can do a run. This isn't, you know, I could put in some test code. This gets run on any execution of any expression or condition. So you don't want a bunch of code in here, but if you have little snippets that are repeated, it's a great place to put it. Uh, so now I can jump back to the condition. I'm going to reference this kind of global function. And when I select this, I'm going to get the same result, but I'm running it through the global function. So that's just kind of the tip of custom conditions, right? You can do all kinds of stuff. This expression can get pretty complex. Switch statements, you name it. Again, you can do things like, you know, get a diff on SQL tables to look at what's missing. You can do infinite counters. You can manipulate data on the fly, either before modeling or before it goes out. So uh, give that a shot. Really cool new feature. What you'll see is over time is as we see patterns of people implementing the same kind of conditions, we'll create out-of-the-box conditions with simple UI configuration to do it for you so you don't need the JavaScript. But for now, it uh, really opens the platform up to do some really cool stuff.